brothers and sisters. I welcome you to this morning service. Today, the 13th Sunday after Trinity, the readings will be taken from the lectionary. Shall we please preserve with ancient and modern 242, 242. Thank you. mercy and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the 13th Sunday after Trinity and we are celebrating the mass appointed for the day with joy and thanksgiving in our hearts. The theme this morning is God's mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. God's mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. And for our intentions, we thank God for his love and mercies towards us and our loved ones. We praise him for his providence, for his protection and care for our lives. And pray that our liturgy will always enrich our personal life of prayer and help us to desire to live godly lives. Let us thank God for the bounty of our land, Ghana, and pray for unity, peace, brotherliness, and discipline in our body politic. Let us pray that God will bless and guide His Excellency the President Anadu Damkwa Kufuadu, give wisdom to all in authority and trusted with leadership, to always seek the good of all men, women, and children 
and use their talents to serve us in these perilous and trying times. We pray for the church choir as they climax their, their week celebration, that God will continue to bless them in all ways, that they use their voices to praise and worship the living God as it is done in the heavenly realm. We pray for their patrons and we pray for their friends, that God will bless them to continue to support them and to share and care. Let us pray for young people who have wandered into the darkness of vice, crime, and drugs, that they will realize their waywardness and turn their hearts totally to God. We also pray for world peace. Let us pray that warring people will seek dialogue and reconciliation and live peace peaceably among each other and pursue that peace. And let us especially remember the war between Russia and Ukraine. Let us pray for those who have asked us to pray for them. The sick and the infirm, the poor and the needy, bereaved and sorrowing, prisoners and refugees, the lonely and indeed all who are in any form of trouble. Let us pray that our God who is mercy and compassion will answer their prayers, meet them at their point of need. We also pray for those celebrating birthdays and various anniversaries. Let us pray that God's favor and blessing will rest on them. And we'll remember Auntie Betty who celebrates 70 years, Auntie Araba also 70 years, and Auntie Wahamina 72 years. We thank God together with our son who graduated from the medical school. God is so good and we bless him for his life. Let us pray that the Lamb of God may take away the sins of the faithful departed and grant them place in that heavenly Jerusalem. And we remember our father and husband, Nitete Chinri Hesse, who was called to rest four years ago. In the silence of our hearts, my dear Christian friends, let us bring our own intentions and prayers before the throne of God so that you and I will receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let us pray. Give peace, Lord, to those who wait for you and your prophets who proclaim you as you deserve. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and my sisters in Christ, we fail to do the things we should do. We say and do things we know are wrong. Let us tell God how sorry we are and ask him to forgive us. Let us confess our sins as we sit or kneel in our own words.
May our Father in heaven, who is merciful and compassionate and forgives his children who are repentant, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to life eternal in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for the peace which is born of faith and hope. Father in heaven, creator of all, look down upon your people in their moment of need. For you alone are the source of our peace. Bring us to the dignity which distinguishes the poor in spirit and show us how great is the call to serve, that we may share in the peace of Christ, who offered his life in the service of all. Almighty God, our creator and guide, may we serve you with all our hearts and know your forgiveness in our lives. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who loves and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the choir. O God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants in the Accra Ray Church Choir, who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth, and grant to them, even now, glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Watch over your children Auntie Betty and Taraba Auntie Wahimina Clint Yosef Wampunsim Eric Dakumesa, who celebrates their birthday. And as their days increase, bless, guide them wherever they may be, strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up when they fall, and in their hearts, may your peace, which passes every understanding, abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the faithful departed. Lord God, you are the glory of believers and the life of the just. Your son redeemed us by dying and rising to life again. Our brother, Mitete Chinri Hesse, was faithful and believed in our own resurrection. Give to him the joys and blessings of the life to come. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll listen to the scripture readings for the day.
Our first Bible reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, reading from verse 7 through to verse 14. Exodus 32, 7 to 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down, because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses saw the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your anger. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I'll make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I'll give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Here ends the first lesson. Our second lesson is taken from the first letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 7 to 12. 1 Timothy, chapter 1, 7 to 12. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders, liars, and perjurers, and for whatsoever is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus alone, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. This is the end of the second lesson. Have mercy upon you, O God, after my great goodness, according to the multitude of thy mercies, do away my offenses. The psalm of praise for this morning is Psalm 51, Psalm 51, we shall chant the first ten verses, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 10.
The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of salvation according to St. Luke from the 15th chapter and reading from verse 1 through to 10. The gospel according to Luke chapter 15 reading from verse 1 through to 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering round to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety and nine righteous people who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. Still standing, let us prepare our hearts and minds to listen to the sermon by singing Ancient and Morning 243, 243, Lord. Their word abided.
make a six. I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of your faithful people gathered here be acceptable unto you who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today will be my last time of preaching to you as Anglican congregation of Accra Ray Church. And I say so because my tenure ends on 30th September 2022. And we have barely two weeks to go. And the next week, um, for those who will take over, the final week I'll be in Manet. So possibly we'll get someone else to come and preach to you. If I may come to preach again, I'll come here as a guest preacher. Possibly at weddings, at funerals, and at other invitations, birthdays, and others. And I don't see this as a valedictory service because the leadership of Accra Ray Church know my principle in life and I've told them to it. So it is a farewell message. The pulpit is too sacred. The altar is too sacred to say certain things. So like I told you, at the end, I'll stand on the lectern and I'll speak. And anyone who likes can ask me a question on the lectern. Because there are so many beautiful things in Accra Ray Church which I've learned and I've copied a whole lot of photocopies and other things which I am sending. But I don't think anybody has told Accra Ray Church what it is. About the spiritual arrogance of some people whom I call the faceless people. Before I say too much, let me keep quiet and then I'll say it on the lecture. There is a verse in scripture I love so much. And King Solomon made this profound statement in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. That there is a time or season for every purpose under heaven. In verse 3 of that same chapter, he goes on to say that there is a time to be born and a time to die. 1st October 2017 was the time I was born in Accra Ray Church. 30th September 2022 is the time I'm dying in Accra Ray Church. And this verse reminds me of my priestly and pastoral work here. Once upon a time, almost five years ago, I moved here as a priest. It seemed only like yesterday when my previous parish was moved with emotions and I was excited with expectation of a new ministerial and priestly experience. All too soon, I have to say goodbye once again to people I have grown to truly love when someone critiques you, it doesn't mean he doesn't love you. I think that person rather loves you. People I really honor in Accra Ray Church and people I respect here. Time really flies very fast. But well, I thank God for your lives because you have been a tremendous blessing to me. Yet, as I said, I'm not doing a valedictory service that is traditionally known due to principles I have and pursue in life. And I don't care if anybody insults me for that. I will deliver my sermon for the 13th Sunday after Trinity and before we close, I would express my appreciation and gratitude to Accra Ray Church because I'm so appreciative and very grateful I'm looking at some faces here and it's so wonderful. 
Luke chapter 15, verse 2b. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And our theme is, God is merciful, compassionate, forgiven, and welcomes sinners. For those of us who are sinners, God, he welcomes us. He loves us so much. So, if you're a sinner like me, always go to God. He will welcome you. And he will take you as his own. If you're not a sinner, well and good, that, that's, that's for you. On this 13th Sunday after Trinity, we have gathered in the presence of our Lord who is merciful, who is compassionate, and who is forgiven. Our morning prayer reads um, like this. Almighty and eternal God, in goodness, you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy, you have redeemed him through Christ our Lord. This is the summary of today's message. So we are given the opportunity to reflect on God's mercy, God's compassion, and his forgiveness. As he reveals it in his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. And let us note, my dear Christian friends, the one important fact that runs through all the Bible lessons for today is the readiness of God to welcome and receive sinners. God's readiness to welcome and receive sinners, irrespective of how much we have fallen and gone away from him. Indeed, it is said that no one is ever too lost to be saved by God's amazing grace. No one is ever too lost to be saved by God's amazing grace. We have our first lesson from Exodus chapter 32, verse 7 to 14. And we read about a God who is faithful to his vows. A God who demonstrated his love and mercy despite his anger and judgment. And as a merciful and compassionate father, God heard the prayers of Moses on behalf of his people and fulfilled his promise that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14. Don't you think, my dear Christian friends, that if you and I intercede for our nation Ghana in these perilous times God will not be merciful and faithful and compassionate to see us through we're using human wisdom for everything thinking that it is human reason and intellect which carry us through this world but I can assure you my dear brothers and sisters it's God and God alone God day we day Sometime after the, their deliverance from each slavery in Egypt, and when Moses had gone to the mountains to receive the Ten Commandments, the people of Israel made a golden calf and worshipped it. They who have promised to serve the Lord. And what was God's reaction to the unfaithfulness? He told Moses, Let me alone, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them then i'll make of you a great nation but moses decided not to leave the people he preferred to die with them rather than alone so moses reminded the lord about his promise to the patriarchs and then asked him do you want israel to say that you have not kept your word with your people what will most of us have done I'm sure I've said, yes, he wants to make me Moses and my descendants a holy people, a people of God. Clear them off and then give it to me. Because we are too selfish in this world now. We think only about ourselves, not about our other brothers and sisters. 
we think that all the good things in this world should come only to us. But I think we need to learn from Moses' example. No, he says, no, Lord. I, I, I don't agree with you. Forgive them. I don't want anything. And that shows the humility of Moses, which you and I ought to emulate. So, we are told in scripture, Yahweh relented over the disaster which he had intended to inflict on his people. And I tell you, the only hope for human salvation is the infinite love and mercy of God. A love that can never be defeated by sin. The Lord remembered that his promises were unconditional and he forgave his people. So if you and I put our trusts in our own strength and our virtuous deeds, then we'll despair. It is safer to put our trusts in the love of God. For before God, we cannot rely on our good deeds for anything. Let us hope and trust in God. If you want this church to grow, it's not the programs and the shoutings which will make this church grow. It is God, the church belongs to God, and he would make this a cry church, a wonderful church. It is not human beings and think they are programs would carry this church. It is God and God alone. Another important lesson we must learn from scripture is the power of intercession for both ourselves and others. Like Moses, the Christ you and I celebrate, what does he do? He continues to intercede for us every day before the Heavenly Father. Jesus always shows his palms, his side, his feet, and his brow to the Father on our behalf in heaven. That is why so many times we see things going amiss, but God in miraculous ways saves us because Jesus is interceding on our behalf. So we must also not be tired of interceding for one another. I'll continue to pray for everybody as I've been praying for the past five years when I leave. We must not be tired of interceding for this world for its peace. We must not be tired of interceding for this nation. Many a time we just pray for ourselves and put a buffet of requests before God. Let us learn how to pray and intercede for others. For it is in so doing that we receive much blessings. We talk too much in Ghana. We criticize too much. And we pray and help too little. I said, we talk too much in Ghana. We criticize too much. And we pray and help too little. Let us pray. Let us continue counseling ourselves. And let us not go about only for those who say, heal him, heal him. Listen to those who also critique you. Because they might be more important than those who heal you. In the second lesson from 1 Timothy 1 verse 12 to 17, Paul reminds us about something. He says that like himself, we are all products of God's mercy. And Paul recounted how his salvation was made possible through the intercession and mercy of Christ. He said, I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and an arrogant man, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance. I acted out of unbelief. How many of us have not acted out of ignorance and unbelief. I am the greatest. Many times, act out of unbelief and ignorance. But when these things are brought to our attention, we need not be proud, but to humble ourselves and accept and reform and transform so that God can use us for further work in his ministry. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 
of this I am the foremost. That is what Paul says. God used Paul to show the world how great his magnanimity was and how inexhaustible his patience was. So we can say, if Paul an enemy, a persecutor of Christians, the greatest of all sinners like he calls himself, receive mercy, can't God definitely receive those of us who have also sinned against him? So like Paul, let us be grateful to God and take advantage of God's saving mercy and grace and for eternal life. Not only for ourselves, because when we become true believers, we are to go out there to give that message of salvation unto others so that they will also come to know the God that we serve in Jesus Christ. In today's gospel from Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 10, Christ was accused of welcoming sinners. But through his action and the parables that he gave us, he demonstrated how merciful and compassionate he was to us. In spite of our sins and stubbornness, and I'm one of the greatest stubborn people, that one I know, Christ is willing to welcome us back to himself. Each day, he, will, he beckons us. Come, let us settle the matter. Even though your sins are red as crimson, they shall be as white as snow. That's what Isaiah tells us. That is the message Christ every day tells us, his children. Because there is none that is righteous. No, not one. Through his mercy and compassionate heart, he is ready to make all things new for us again. And our text, which was read for us, are the three parables famously called the gospel of the lost and found. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the prodigal son which follows. And these three are practical stories and great spiritual truths about what we call divine initiative. Divine initiative. A God who takes the initiative or the first step in searching for lost sinners and saves them. It is God who takes the initiative in searching for us and saves us. It is not us, not of our doing, lest we boast. The three parables emphasize the truth of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So let us therefore consider three main issues in these parables. The first one we'll look at is something is lost. There was a search for the lost. And there was joy when the lost is found. Something is lost. There is a search for the lost. And joy when the lost is found. In the first parable, a ship is lost. And in the second parable, a coin is lost. The third one, we didn't read it, but a son is lost. What is important, my dear brothers and sisters, is that the owners knew that something was lost. Something which was so valuable to them was lost. The, the, what, the loss was so precious to them. The sheep that was lost belonged to the shepherd. It was not any wild sheep that he just chanced upon. The coin that was lost belonged to the woman. I'm sure it was part of her savings. So they took care and were concerned about their sheep and their coin. And this tells us about how God cares for you and me. God is concerned about us as his children, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's not have any doubt in our minds. God is very concerned and care for us. The woman knew how many silver coins she had. 
and what belong to her? Don't you know that our Heavenly Father knows you, that you belong to him? You belong to Christ. And that's what 2 Timothy 1 verse 19 tells us. And God is concerned about our welfare. So you see, many a time we worry ourselves and bother ourselves about so many things, thinking that God does not care. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, God cares for us amidst the storms, amidst the problems. God cares for us. His eyes are over us, roving over us. Do you think his plans for us are not plans of good? That's what he tells us. My plans are for you are plans not of, for good, not of evil. And I'll bring it to an expected end. What sort of God do we want again, my dear brothers and sisters? So we belong to God. Even when we stray, when we lose our way, when we run away, God will persistently look for us. And he's always ready to welcome us back home with joy. God wants us to be in a loving relationship with him because that is how he created us. He created us for a loving relationship with him. So the question each of us must ask ourselves, do we want to be lost? Or do we want to be found? We can choose to stay to be lost forever and suffer the consequences of our rebellion from God. And we can choose to be found and be under God's protecting arms and wings. But to get found, you have to turn to Christ. Walk away from everything else. Last Sunday, for those who are saying that, Jesus challenged us to give up everything that matters to us in order to put him first in everything and to be his true disciple. If you want to be found, that is it. You count everything but loss. Christ, whom you have gained. And getting found requires admitting that we belong to God and willing to live our lives in a way that pleases him. It also means that we should welcome people into the Christian family just as Jesus welcomed sinners. It's our job, a ministry that God has given us. So if you're a Christian, and you don't talk to people about God, then check your life and go back, change and transform and talk to people about God because you've got something which is so beautiful that you have to share. A search for the lost. The shepherd left 99 sheep in the open country and went after one that was lost until he found it. The woman who lost the coin lit a lamp and swept the house and sought diligently until she found it. Here we see the love of the value for the lost. And there's one plain truth. Sinners will not come to Christ on their own. God intentionally pursues sinners. God intentionally pursues sinners. For while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Just not when we have become righteous. God's care and diligence is demonstrated to us in the cross. He values us. That is why he sent his only begotten son to that wretched cross so that you and I would have salvation. So it's important for us to understand this fact and accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior and live and walk in him. There's no creed nor denomination from this and there's no art to this and I like the words of the old hymn pass me not O gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by savior savior hear my humble cry Jesus is a shepherd who is not content with 99 Safe souls, but concerned about the one who is lost. And Jesus will pursue and will go after the one that is lost until he finds them. That's what he did to pursue us, even me. Jesus is the one who sweeps the house 
and seek diligently until he finds. It is God who showed his love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And Peter wrote about this great and costly search for the lost, where he wrote in 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19, you were ransomed, not with perishable things, but, but such things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. You and I have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let us walk in him, live in him, speak truth in him, and live and love each other without anything at the back of our hearts and minds. The idea of God searching for lost humankind was not new to the Israelites. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 139, Oh Lord, you have saved me and known me. In Jeremiah 4, 11 following, it is God who searches for any who are good, any who are righteous, and God who finds a world lost completely to evil. Psalm 27 verse 4 following, One thing I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. So God continues to search for us. When the lost is found, there is rejoicing. Jesus said that when the man found his lost sheep, he laid it on his shoulder rejoicing. And when he came home, he called together his friends and his neighbors and said to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which is lost. The woman who found her lost coin called together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the coin that I had lost. Both the shepherd and the woman rejoiced in finding that which was lost, and they wished others to share in their joy. Great joy, God's great joy, is when a lost sinner is found. That is why he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's go out there so that there will always be joy in heaven. We read that there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. All of heaven, my friends, rejoice when someone commits his life to Jesus Christ. This is the mission that Jesus is committed to. And his mission is what he has requested you and I to partake in. The mission of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. We are called to that ministry of soul winning. We dare not disappoint God. We dare not disappoint God. If there are any rough edges about us, let us ask God to shape us so we will be out there in that ministry to bring others also unto God. Finally, we are called to make a decision for God. Those who are not Christians need not confess, need to confess their sins and faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and for, for him to transform them into his disciples. And for those of us who are Christians, we need to live daily righteous and holy lives we must also be committed to Jesus' mission to seek the lost. Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, welcomes sinners and dines with them. He reveals God who is merciful, compassionate, and forgiving to us. The God of Jesus is a God who gives salvation to us gratuitously in spite of our not meriting it. He gives banquets to those who are hungry for salvation and righteousness. It is not the will of our Father in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. So you and I should try to be close to God and live for him and partake in soul winning. For indeed, our God is merciful, compassionate, and forgiven. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My dear Christian friends, let us affirm our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please will sit for intercessory prayer. Prayerfully in our intercession this morning. We pray that the Lord will open the lips of the Tri Richard choir as they sing to your praises and your glory. You say, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of Him shall be sweet. I'll be glad and sing unto the Lord. I'll be glad in the Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lives to your goodness. Open our eyes to your presence. And open our ears to your call. And open our hearts to your love. Lord, as far as possible, without surrender, grant us your grace to be on good terms with all persons. Grant us the grace to speak the truth quietly and clearly and listen to others. You will take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrounding the things of youth and not distress ourselves with imaginings. By faith, we accept your will for our lives and put our lives into your hands, no matter how difficult the present trials. We will continue to give cheerfully the glory of your work. Freely have we received. Freely may we give, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our church in the church universal. Grant your whole church grace to show the truth. And the true faith, true works of love and mercy. Help her to strengthen the bonds of the crowded church while bearing in mind that those who have are not necessarily those with greater grace. For what do we have? that we do not receive. And if we receive, why should we boast as though it was not given to us? Gracious Father, take away all prejudices that cause unequal sentiments in this great church. Let us give thanks to God for our Father, for all his gifts so freely bestowed on us. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our nation, Ghana. Gracious Father, all authority is in your hands. We pray that you touch the hearts of our president and all opinion leaders in this country and give them the wisdom and knowledge to provide right solutions to the serious economic pressures facing the country now. Lord, we pray that through your own divine intervention, they would dedicate themselves to the tax ahead and set the well-being of this nation to ease the pain on cost of living confronting us all. Lord, give us the patience to understand and appreciate them 
for their efforts as they lead this great nation. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our local communities and our homes. Lord, teach us to be generous as you have been generous with us. Show us the truth of the saying. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Help us to understand that others, perhaps unknown to us, depend on us for help. And remind us our worst needs to heal the wounds of our own community. Lord, make us a gift to others in, in your name. Thank you for blessing our homes and families and our friends for the loving care which surrounds us. Lord, in your mercy. Let us now intercede for those who have the church to pray for them. On the occasion of her 72nd birthday, Auntie Wilh Wilhelmina gives thanks to God for his faithfulness. Her hymn of praise is ancient and more than 290. I rather give thanks and praise to God for attaining 70 years on Friday, 9th September. Her summer praise is Psalm 40, verse 16. On the occasion of her 70th birthday, Betty gives thanks to God for his guidance and many blessings bestowed on her. And the song of praise is Methodist in number 80. A couple is thanking God for the successful graduation of their son from the medical school. And their hymn of, hymn of praise is Methodist hymn number 399. In memory of the fourth anniversary of the passing on to glory of Nee Tati Jinri Hesse, the wife, the children, the entire family and friends give thanks to God for his life here on earth. They pray for the continued response of his soul in the arms of its maker. In the psalm of praise is Psalm 103, verses 1 to 2. The hymn of praise for all the thanksgiving is Methodist in number 10, verse 1. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom his word rejoices who from our mother's arms have blessed us on our way with countless gifts and love and still is ours today. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you. By faith, we accept your will for our lives and put our lives in your hands. And now, May the soul of the beloved and most cherished Queen of England rest in perfect peace. Amen. Now to him who is able to do more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout the generation forever and ever. Amen. My dear Christian friends, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God and to one another by his death on the cross. We have met in his name. We share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us exchange the sign of peace. As we begin with the offertory, the choir.
this month, my dear Christian friends, we pray for the choir of Akari Church and for their friends and patrons that God's graces will go with them and strengthen them in their work for the Lord. May they continue to sing to his praise and glory as the angels do every day in the presence of our Heavenly Father in the eternal realm. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And we remember Auntie Betty, Auntie Araba, Auntie Wilhelmina, Clint Buampunsen, Eric Dakumensa, and Karina Na Ajoko. And we thank God for the life of our brother who has completed medical school. Let us also pray for the repose of the soul of Nitete Chinre Hesse. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen, Lord, hear the prayers of your people and receive our gifts. May the worship of each one here bring salvation to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, accept these gifts we offer for me to take Shinrei Hesse, our brother. May they free him from sin and continue to keep him in the happiness of life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. By his birth, we are reborn. In his suffering, we are freed from sin. By his rising from the dead, we rise to everlasting life. In his return to you in glory, we enter into your heavenly kingdom. And so we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise as they say, Holy, 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 Lord God of high and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed man in your own likeness and set him over the whole world to serve you, his creator and to rule over all creatures. Even when he disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the power of death. Able to seek and find you. Again and again you offered a covenant to man and through the prophets taught him to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our savior was conceived through the power of the Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, and by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of your grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings and let them become the body and blood. of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in the world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly father, he showed the death of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread, said the blessing, 
broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. Amen. When we were at supper, he took the cup filled with wine. He gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shared for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Amen. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, Look upon this sacrifice which you have given to your church and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Daniel, Silvanus, our diocesan, George, our suffragan, Mark, Eric, our priests, and the bishops and clergy everywhere Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present at Accra Ray Church, and all your people who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember Auntie Betty, Auntie Araba, Auntie Wahmina, Clint, Eric, and Karina, and your son, whom you blessed. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone, especially Nita Tichinri Hesse. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints, then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, from whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, Jesus taught us to call God our Father. And so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Our citizen heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the Lamb's Supper. Lord, I'm not worthy. The gift of God for the people of God. Amen. Our first communion hymn is Ancient and Modern 254, hymn 254.
M259. 259.
much we value your mercy. All mankind shall gather under your protection. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, may the Eucharist you have given us influence our thoughts and actions. May your spirit guide and direct us in your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you renew our lives by this Holy Eucharist. Keep our brother, Nitete Chinrihesi, in the eternal life, where you and Christ reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us together say the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please let us sit. And we'll ask the choir to give us a song. After that, we'll have a short video clip by the Harvest Committee. Thank you very much, choir. We need more of these local songs. Um, English, seriously, is my second language. It's Fante, which is my first language. English, second, and God third. The girls should not beat me because I have the um, Lamptey name. So please, more of these local um, anthems and others. God richly bless you. We'll take a clip, short video clip by the Harvest Committee.
Hey, hard day's work. Well done. Recently, a snake tried to get into my car after I parked under a tree for a while. Then I remembered what my school chaplain had told me about Thanksgiving. He said, more deadly than the fangs of an adder is a thankless child. See, so God has done so much for us. And he has given us all that we are and have. First Corinthians 4, 7 says, what do you have that you did not receive? What we receive is sometimes what we can visibly see. Other times we are not even aware. Like I was unaware there was a snake on top of my car. And it could have gotten into the car when I opened the door for so long. Then other times when you are completely asleep, you breathe in so much air, nobody charges you for it. Then sometimes we are able to see what we have been given. Curtsy for boys and girls says we must say thank you for whatever we have been given. I want to invite you as a member of the Akrari Church or as a Christian or someone who God has done something for to say thank you to him. November 6th, 2022, all our services will be saying thank you to God for who he is, what he has done for us, for who we are, and his blessings to us. We will also join in singing MHB 399, written by Charles Wesley. What shall we render to our God for all his mercy store? We'll simply take the gifts he has bestowed and humbly ask for more then he says my vows to him i will readily pay when god does some good thing for us we often are quick to say i will do this i will do this please let us come and pay our vows Shall we have our welcome message? Shall we have our welcome message on the screen? And let us all listen to the welcome message. Very welcome well, to the Accra well. Church. We aspire to be a strong, united church, impacting families. communities bow down and worship him this is the hour workplaces say that again sing with me this is the hour and nations for christ hear the spirit You are welcome to any of our Sunday services at the Ridge at 7.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 10.30 a.m., Manet at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., and Tudu at 9.30 a.m. Our Sunday services are also streamed online on our YouTube pages. Ridge services at 7.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 10.30 a.m., and Manet services at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. We'll sing Ancient and Modern Supplementary 8 in the first verse and ask those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries to come for blessing. in the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. 
let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your handmaids who recall today the death of their death. They rejoice in your gifts of life and love. Family and friends, bless them, Father, with your presence. And surround them with your love that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. In good health, and a walk with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ask the choir to sing the doxology for us as we bless them. Praise God for more all things glory. God, we give you thanks for the many and varied ways you build up your church. Bless the Accra Ray Church Choir. Grant that through their vision and direction they may be of service to this church and bring honor and glory to your name. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless your people and fill them with zeal. Strengthen them by your love to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Notices. Bands are published between Derek Krenzel and Araba Banfo, Brandfo. This is the second announcement. If anyone knows any just cause or impediment as to why this couple should not be joined in holy matrimony, he or she must contact the ministers. Other information. 
COVID-19 protocols. We continue the mandatory wearing of nose mask within the sanctuary. And we enter from the main entrance, that's the west door, and exit through the wings, the north and the south doors. We also encourage to take the COVID-19 vaccination. And those who have already taken the first shot, please go try to take the second shot. Our anchor confirmation continues at 9.30. Auntie Muriel, we'll give you permission to go. It's at the Fellowship Center. So please kindly register and then get your awards to register. And I'll kindly ask the parents to pick a copy of the manual and teach the children in the house. So when they come for classes, it will be a supplement. You are Christians, disciple and teach your children. And then we would also supplement it. I beg of you. Thank you. Ghana Praise. Join Ghana Praise this and every Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. And let us pray and intercede for the nation as Moses did for the people of Israel. Harvest. Those congregants who want to advertise in the 2022 Harvest brochure should contact the church secretariat for requirements. And towards the preparation of the brochure for the Harvest Thanksgiving service, there will be group photographs. So please... By 6 November, all recognized groups are kindly requested to submit their photographs to the church secretariat. All church groups are kindly requested to present their budget and calendar of activities for 2023 to the administrative manager by close of work, Friday, 16 September 2022. The term of office of the present council comes to an end in March 2022. Nominations are invited from qualified members to stand for election. Any communicant who has been registered for at least three years can stand for election but must be proposed and seconded by other qualified members. Nominations are also open for Manet Management Committee since the term of office of the current committee will also end in March 2023. Nomination forms are available for collection from the administrative manager at the church secretariat. And for the Manage Management Committee, persons are to be nominated for the Chairman, Secretary, Member of Finance and Property, Evangelism and Services, and three other members to represent all the groups in the congregation. Deadline for submission of nomination forms is on Monday, 16th January, 2023, by close of business. And here I would add, it's here, um, the Nomination Committee, Ante Gifti, Uncle Ted is not here, and all of you, please let the members know that when you go for council, it is not yes, sir, yes, sir. People should speak if they think the issues ought to be really, what do you call it, um, talked about. There's so much silence, bystander effect at council meetings. And two, this church is an institution if there's going to be a very major change, then let the person standing as chairman make it a manifesto. Not that at the end of the term, a major change like this is brought to the church. It should be a manifesto that when I come, I would want to do this and this. And I'm happy that we have agreed that there should be a strategic plan and every member of this church knows where we are going or where we'll be within the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Every member knows it, not a few people. So the strategic plan should be here. Everybody should know the short term, medium term, and long term of Accra Ray Church. Everybody knows it. Thank God it is there. And for us to also pursue the church and life and nature. That is what will grow Accra Ray Church. We have a niche. The marketing professionals will tell you, you must have your marketing niche. Don't go into territories where someone is the best. You can never be the best. You can at least be somewhere there. Accra Ray Church has a niche. Please know it. 
and then pursue the niche of Accra Research. Because I dare say, anyone that we want to be like, we know them, we are ministers, we know them. So nobody can come and, what do you call it, um, fool us by gimmicks. So let us pursue our niche and then ensure that we disciple ourselves and others to fill this church. I can't imagine anyone who wants to be what, a preacher and within, what do you call it, 15, 20 minutes, hallelujah, hallelujah, going up and I think that is preaching. No. We are not learning the right things. And let us learn the right things. Submit ourselves to authority in humility. Like I said, when you come and stand here, and you, this is the end of the reading. What reading are you reading? The Bible is not a reading. This is the end. This is the word of God. It is, what do you call it, I'm covering all of us in the, in the Orthodox churches. The Bible is the word of God. So anytime we have to announce it that it is the word of God, my dear brothers and sisters, for everybody to know, it is not the end of reading. And some come and stand here and say, good morning. Because at, what do you call it, a funeral, somebody came to say, good morning, before he started reading. That is why we Anglicans have stated that at funerals, the reading will be done by those who have learned and have been appointed readers. I have my theological argument with the Methodist and Presby ministers who say that it is part of what they call it. Um, um, for those, what is the word? Co comforting, consoling people. You don't console people by the person reading the scripture here. More so, it is not them who read it. If you want to console and comfort people when, they have funeral, when people die, go to their houses and go and console them. And then pray for them. You don't wait at the time that we are going to have, um, what do you call it, funeral service, then they come and read for us. So go and tell our Methodist and present ministers. I don't care if anybody criticizes me. Because we comfort the bereaved by the reading of the word, by the exposure of the word of God, and by our prayers. That is what we do. And this is theological. So we don't pander to people because we are afraid. Omobekasa nti. Here no Bekasa, if you are a minister, let them talk. Because you are leading the people as a shepherd. Because here in Accra Riches, sometimes people see us as harlings. And unfortunately, me, I'm not a harling. We are shepherds. So those who are more knowledgeable than us, who have more theology than us, who have more of the Holy Spirit than us, please, unfortunately for you, we have been anointed. We have been anointed. And I say anointing is everything. Anointing is everything. So be humble and subject yourself. The constitution is very clear regarding the role of ministers. So please, where it is a ministerial job, sometimes you might even be better than us. I acknowledge there are so many beautiful things I've seen in Accra Ray Church. Very beautiful, which I'm taking away. You are better in some areas than the ministers. But please, we are spiritual heads. We are not harlings. So when you are doing it, please come and show it to us so that we add our blessings to it. Else, for me, it's funny. And those of you who are also indisciplined, Father Usu is here. There are people who go to tell Father Usu what he must do. I am the only Anglican minister here. There is only one Anglican minister, only one Methodist minister, only one Presby minister here. So Father Usu and for the reverend and command, they are not ministers of the congregation. But most times you go and tell them they should come and do things for you. For those who are so matured, so disciplined, everything he tells me. And also the job is even too much. As soon as he tells father, go and do it. But else, it is you, the congregation, who have created the problem between me and Father Usu. So please, it is not you. Us is the Go and tell the Methodist and Presbyterian ministers. I'm not criticizing my brothers. Let us be disciplined and follow rules so that it, because it's the same congregation who says the ministers are quarreling. And it's the same congregation who bring this about. So anyone who has anything, whatever it is, whatever is a committee, whatever is what you call it, um, a board, please make sure you send it to the coordinating minister, not to Reverend Kamau or to Father Usu. We are not in competition. God has given everyone his 
gifts and charism. And not because somebody has been here, he was here with you as a youth, so you use him to undermine the, what do you call it, the spirituality, the unity of the, what do you call it, um, priesthood or the ministers. Please, I beg of you, do the right things. Those who are formed as committees, then you send your report to what they call it, council, and council says that it should be done. If it's got something got to do with spirituality and ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical functions, please send it to the coordinating minister. And then, and council to send it to the coordinating minister. Don't debate it or discuss it unless you have your own agenda, which you would turn around. And for those who said something, when he was talking to us, was it a week or two ago? He said, ARC has the opportunity of interacting with senior and experienced clergy and leadership. And leadership should be open and transparent in sharing the vision of the church with them for guidance. The vision of Accra Ray Church is stated. There's no vision that they'll have to share with us. If it's other experiences and things, then they have to share. But if it's a vision, then what sort of vision has Accra Ray Church got from the, apart from the one which was what we call put there and what we all know? There should be no other vision until this church decides to change its vision. So I beg to differ with Father Usu. There is a vision of Accra Ray Church and everybody knows. So I found it very sad when it is said that it takes the ministers five years to understand Accra Ray Church. And it was in your, in, your, in your paradigm shift thing and nobody said anything about it. And the ministers are so dumb that it takes us five years to understand Accra Ray Church. After it's experienced ministers who are brought here. And once you have the church mission and vision, it won't take you more than two months to understand and follow and then be able to give spiritual direction. Because there are people who think Accra Ray Church belong to them. The average church member here comes and loves God. My interaction with the people here, I will stand up for you. I will stand up for you. Those who come with their problems, pray for us. Because they respect the ordained ministry. And there are some who think you are a harling, so let's get ahead and do without consulting you. Please, I beg of you, in spiritual matters, in spiritual matters, if you are not being ordained, just respect the ministers who have been ordained. However, what they call it, um, useless they may be. Because God knows why he ordained them. And if you think you have, you, you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you, please go for ordination and come and do it. Bible first. Dear parents, do you know the greatest book ever written? In order to find the answer and more, the Cry Ray Church Sunday School invites your child to Bible first. Saturday, 17 September, from 8 to 3 p.m. at Accra Ray Church. Main theme, renewal of the mind for transformational growth. With sub team, a new creation. The idea behind Bible Fest is for children of Accra Ray Church Sunday School to learn God's truth, fellowship, and worship, be evangelized and challenged to grow, and to develop a closer relationship with God whilst having fun. There will be various activities, including a Bible quiz, Bible lesson, Bible puzzle and anagram, memory verse, challenge, musical chairs, penalty kicks, and many more. Side attraction, lucky dip. There will also be an exhibition and sale of Christian literature for children and lots of fun and food. Don't let your child miss out. September and Aviosi is under the theme, My Work, My Ministry. Join this Wednesday, 14 September, 6 p.m. with Mr. Baba Mahama, speaking on Christian values. This will be in person. The Mission 50 Group celebrates its week from 12 to 18 September. Details of activities are in the weekly bulletin. If you are preparing for marriage, the Marriage Preparation Committee would like to meet the couple and their parents or representatives. This will be a Zoom meeting on Tuesday, 20 September 2022 from 6 p.m. Please call the office number and book a slot of 20 minutes. No preparation. I won't say that one because they are working on the behalf of the ministers. So the Marriage Preparation Committee, please don't think... The work is yours. It, marriage preparation is by the ministers because we, we don't have time. That's why we have delegated it to you. So please refer to us. Couples are encouraged to give themselves up to six months planning for best preparation. The tertiary education scholarship scheme application for 2022-2023. Accra Ray Church tertiary education scholarship scheme application for that year is open to brilliant but needy church members seeking admission to 
public tertiary educational institutions, including nursing training colleges, as regular undergraduates or already enrolled students who need financial assistance. The applicant should be ARC member, should be reg registered with ARC or its branches, shall be a member of at least three years standing, shall be in good standing, must have apl applied or gained admission to a public tertiary institution as a regular student. For applicants under 18 years of age not registered with a church, a parent shall be a registered member of ARC or its branches and in good standing for at least three years. Application form may be collected from the church office during working hours and submitted by 4 p.m. on 30 September 2022. Only eligible applicants will be interviewed. Kindly consult the notice board for more information. Send off service in honor of Reverend Canon Samuel Lamte and Reverend Father Usu will take place on Sunday, 25th September at 7.30 service. The congregation should please take note. I won't say anything. <laughs> What's enough again? The Accra Ray Church Welfare Committee will be inaugurated next Sunday, 18 September 2022, at 7.30 a.m. service. And the committee members will be introduced at 8.30, contemporary and 10.30, service at the Ridge. Next Sunday, 25th committee. The committee members will be introduced at 8 a.m., contemporary and 10 a.m. at Manor service. Seasonal vigil. The Accra Ray Church intercessors is inviting the entire congregation to the special quarterly vigil to usher in the plans and purposes of our Lord through prayer. Speaker, Reverend Dr. George Arthur, faith of the believer in the sovereign will of God, 22nd September 2022, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m., Accra Ray Church Sanctuary. Bible Society of Ghana Translation Seminar comes on this Tuesday, 13 September, at Ascension Presbyterian Church at Abraka. Bible Translation is a ministry, that's the theme. Very Reverend Professor John Ikem is a speaker. He's a translation consultant of the Bible Society of Ghana and acting president, Methodist University College. And submission of requests for prayers and thanksgiving. And um, we said the last time should be Thursday. I beg you, please, kindly do that because it interrupts our worship. You having a college prayer and then they come and put a request for birthday there. I beg you. You see, when the next minister comes, he will think, I didn't do the right thing and I didn't tell you about the right things. So I beg you, please start doing it so that you will not think that I didn't teach the right things. All these things that I'm saying, that is it. When he comes, he also knows so much. Ah, what did Lamte do here? So I beg you, we've said it and said it and said it and people don't like the reading thing. I beg you, do the right things because they'll think we did not form you well. But it's, it's all of us are... I don't know what I should do. Ask my, my son, you that uh, if ES can go, his ES will be a, a being like this. I pull it. We have available at the bookstore a um, book authored by Reverend Professor Seth Ayite, The Graces of God. The copy is 150. I've, I have mine, and it's very good. Please get a copy and read. You'll be blessed. The Family Month Committee wishes to thank the congregation for participation in all the anniversary programs and other activities during the month August 2022. Our prayer is that it has tithes and several lessons learned to help and guide us in our Christian work as we grow to become like Christ. May we continue to renew our minds to and live our Savior's words. We are the light of the world. And therefore, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Thank God. Let us not say it by mouth. Let us say it with our lives because I see certain things and I get upset from leaders and from some of us. We're saying it, we're preaching it, we are in YouTube, integrity and those things, and we don't live integrity. Funeral announcements. Burial service for the late Felix Dodo, a member of this church, will be held here on Friday, 16th September at 8.30, followed by a private burial. He was the brother of James, James Dodo, cousin of Edward Pinto Mandy, and... Charles Langdon, all members of this church. Burial service for the late Mr. John Kofi Siama Damte Sr., a member of this church, will be held here on Saturday, 17 September at 8 a.m., followed by the final funeral rites at the Fellowship Center. Intermittent private burial. He was the father of John Nana Kofi Isiyama Damte Jr., Eric Wekwanochi Isiyama Damte, father in law of Mrs. Regina, Regina Obing Isiyama Damte, grandfather of Kingsley George and Kwabena Daaku. Isiyama Dante, all members of this church. Let us pray for the repose of the soul of our dear brothers and also pray for their beloved family. 
the death is reported of Eric Ted Minsa Erodoaji, a member of this church. Funeral announcements, funeral arrangements were announced later. He was the husband of Mrs. Safira Adudwaji, father of Nene Kabute Adudwaji, Mrs. Angate Antechi, Ahuma Adudwaji, and Mrs. Kabuki Uusu Atakura, brother of William Ahuma Adudwaji, Pearl Adudwaji, Manet Chapel, Lovi Adudwaji, and father in law of Kwame Antechi, all members of this church. The death is reported of Dr. Lloyd Sobojo. Funeral arrang arrangements will be announced later. He was a brother of Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo and Daniel Sobojo, an uncle of Mr. Bowe and Bueno Plaha, all members of this church. Let us pray for the repose of their soul and let us pray for the, the bereaved family. Thank you very much and God richly bless you. And uh, as I was saying, um, when I, I was coming here, I met the nomination committee and they interviewed me. I've talked to the chairman already because I requested for an exit interview. I've talked to the chairman, so even the plenty talk I'm, I'm talking, I've reduced it by 90%. Else, I'll spend two hours talking to you. But the nomination committee, if you have, what do you call it, an interview for somebody to be appointed, ensure that you will do the exit interview. The nomination committee, do an exit interview. I say this, because, you see, ministers come and they go. And sometimes you think they are happy about rich church. The point is that there are certain things you can't change here. But there should also be change. I had to convince Reverend Ayi to do validatory service and take the money that was given him. Today I'm giving you information. And Reverend Ayi did not buy the vehicle which was offered him. You think it was it just decided? Nobody knows the reasons. But I know the reasons. He was not happy. But now when he comes, he's happy. All of us, when we go, we come, we'll be happy. But there are things which ought to be sorted out here. Because people don't like change. So there should be an exit interview. Auntie Gifty. So that you would let members know what is happening behind the scenes. If I had, maybe you might have a book full of what you call it, um, things that I will say. But now, five years have passed. And as you were coming for communion, I was looking at the faces. If I don't take care, I'll leave so many names and I'll be in trouble. But at the same time too, I still have to, what do you call it, um, mention names. People who have impacted our lives. Had it not been found somebody here, look at how difficult is it, is it to get a job. Someone here, my son came from the U.S. After national service, he stayed for one year. Someone here got a job for him. In a bank. So what, what again do I say? What good can be done for you more than this? Because as for me, my time is, is past. It's our children. And somebody does this for me in Accra Ray Church. I don't think I will have had it anywhere. But for Accra Ray Church. There are so many lovely and beautiful people here. Generous. There are two people. Every month they have an allowance for me. Every month. Those two people, I will mention their names. If, if, if they are not happy, please forgive me. Mrs. Mary Chinuresi and Mr. James Kwashi Aiden. Every month they give me an allowance. What again do I want in Accra Ray Church? So many lovely and good people here. Since I came here, I've not bought a shirt. As for the wine, I don't drink and I don't give. So when you come to those who drink, come to my house and come and collect it because I won't bring it out. The Guild of the Good Shepherd. Every, everybody. So I really appreciate being at, at a cry rich. I'm happy. I've known people. I've made a family here. And I'll never forget. I'll always come here. Sometimes even if you don't invite me, I'll come. Because you are my family. So I thank you so very much. How you've impacted my life and the life of my family with your extreme generosity, your kind words, your gifts of in kind and in cash, your counseling. And Taba will come and say, Father, what again do I want? Some who encourage us in our sermons. Accra Riches is a wonderful place. And so I thank the first family we said, but we'll go and do the needful thing. 
When I don't mention your name, I, I beg you, don't beat me. I will look at the faces too and then call some because I can't call all. And Mr. and Mrs. Spencer, they are not here. Mr. and Mrs. Daku, um, the Banasco uh, brothers and their wives, Ted and Alex, Uncle Joe Baja, Richard Aite, Alfred Aye, Mrs. Adimola, Mr. Eddie Hayford, Mrs. Trini Hesse, Mrs. Akosuya Frema Opare, Patience Damte, um, Philip Addison and Nora, Yvonne Sowa, what do you call it, and Yvonne Tego, Yvonne Aiden, William Osepoku, all the Chiramatin Battalion. Kobe Kesi, Vero, Boachi Kufuo, um, Mr. and Mrs. Gedilai, Mrs. Thompson, Professor and Mrs. Adumako, um, Abba Banasco and others, my driver, Annan, Mina Matefiu, Marian Kwanza, Mrs. Alberta Kwote, Mr. Tom Ando, Peter Eiji, Mr. and Mrs. James Kwashi Aiden, Bertha Smith, Mrs. Okain, Mr. and Mrs. Okain, Dr. Asari, Mrs. Comfort Slater, Muriel Edusei, Kate Kwote, Papa Fiu. And when you were coming, I was looking at the faces. Charlotte Engman, what do you call it? Uh, and to give to you, your name will be mentioned at 10.30. I put it there. All these lovely people. How can I forget you? My altar party. Here they are. The service. The size persons. The choristers. The music directors. You, you can't forget people who impact your life so much. And we are so grateful. I'm mentioning this because I'm the anchor minister and I know what you do. There. There's many things which were not done directly to Father Wusu. Things that were bought for this church, for the ministers to use to what, lighten the, uh, the pressure on them. We are so grateful to you. And may God richly bless you all. And we'll say, finally, you know, I am very abrasive unlike Father Usu. And when you are abrasive, you step on toes. Plenty toes. And you not step on them lightly. You step on them hard. So I know I've stepped on so many toes. I ask all of you to forgive me. Because when you are suffering, what do you call it, um, offends you. And you don't forgive, then it means you are not forgiving God. There are others that we've had maybe um, differences and a whole lot. Uh, me, like the typical fisherman, once I say it, it's off. God richly bless all of you. And on the 2nd October, at 4 p.m., we'll have my installation as the dean of the Cathedral Church of the Most Holy Trinity. What I require of you is your prayers. The challenges there are more than the challenges we have in Accra Real Church. And I'll bring the cards. Not everybody will have the cards. I'll do a soft copy. So everybody is invited. If you don't come and I don't see your face, you know me. When I see you, I'll tell you that I didn't see you because you don't like me. And you also realize that I didn't put a bowl here for anybody to put anything in. Come and put that thing you didn't put in the bowl here in the bowl at, rich, what do you call it, on the 22nd October for the church. It will go to the church. And if you can't come, make it mumu. I won't take it. I'll give it to the church. And if I don't see your name and your face there, when I see you, I'll say, you, I won't charge it. You've got Armstrong. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are always in our prayer and will always be in our prayers. We'll never forget you. But let us keep to the faith. Let us keep to the faith. And let our lives reflect Jesus Christ. And let us also be merciful and loving. Because somebody told me, people bring bodies here um, to Accra Richard for funeral because it gives them, what, what word is it, Father? Re respectability. It is convenience, not respectability. That's why I say I, I use the word spiritual arrogance. Nobody brings a body here for respectability. We bring it here for convenience. Because all of us are sinners. So those 
who think they are holier than thou. Please learn the humility of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for the well so sweet. God richly bless you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please humble your heads and ask for God's blessings. Lord, bless and strengthen your people. May they remain faithful to you and always rejoice in your mercy. Care for them when they even stray. And give us a complete change of heart so we may follow you with greater fidelity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. The hymn for the recession is Asian in the Morning 274, hymn 274. Stanza, please. Last stanza.